How's it going today? And today I'm doing a video on cloning and color matching. The two things are actually more related than you would think because when you're trying to do a clone shot of the same actor in two or three or four more locations, you want to make sure that the lighting stays the same. But oftentimes if you're outside, as we are in this case, the lighting will change and you don't have any control over that. So you'll end up doing some color matching, trying to match the shots up because the lighting changed and you didn't have any control of it. Now, if you're inside, ideally you would have control. If there's light coming in through the windows, that could change as well. So to start, of course, you need your footage. And I already have my uh, my two clips. This is the clip one is on uh, track two. You know, we'll just call this clone one. And then we have her talking to herself on the second clip, which is clone two. Clone one, and this is clone two. As far as getting the actual clone shot, the things to keep in mind there is that you want the camera to uh, to be still and you don't want it to be moved at all. And actually, in this case, the camera did move a little bit because I didn't realize it, but the bolt on the tripod head had come loose and it shifted a little bit. There's a fix for that, a pretty easy fix. Like I said earlier, you want to make sure that the lighting stays the same. And then the other thing is you want to make sure that the actors keep their eye lines, especially if they're going to look, be interacting with each other. I put this lamp stand there, this light stand there. I should have just moved it a little bit more off the frame just so that I would have had some, it wouldn't have been there when I'm editing. I could have had more opportunities with editing, but now that that has to be masked out versus if I'd had it off to the side, I could have used that footage of the person just staring without the light stand being there. So I should have had the, you should have something, an eyeline marker for the actor, but move it out of frame. And then the other thing, the main, the other main thing to know is when you're filming your actor, make sure that they know that they have to keep their movements limited and restricted because you don't want them reaching beyond the mask area and they can't always tell where that is going to be. So you want to try to keep some separation uh, between where the actors are positioned so that they don't reach over or into the mask that's going to be there. And then the last thing is you might want to consider adding, uh, because it is a locked shot, you might want to consider actually adding some a little camera shake to the shot at the, in the end just to give it a little more sense of realism and immediacy. To do a clone shot is the, the biggest part of it is just getting your, your footage. And then once you've got your footage like we do here, you just put the clips on top of each other. And in this case, we can just put this, drag this all to the first position. And then what we do is we go into the top clip under event pan crop and just make sure we're in the first position. Uh, make sure our cursor sync is set. And then this is the world's easiest mask to draw. You just click on the, the mask tool here first, and then you just click on the rectangle tool and you just click and drag and you make your, your mask. I don't know if you can see this, but where you're making the, the line for the mask, you could uh, you can actually try to put it along an existing line. So I'm just actually looking up here on the roof here and just trying to put the mask along an edge, an existing edge. Okay. Now all we have to do is just switch our masks from uh, the mode from positive to negative, and there we go. And then so you'll see she walks in and she says hello and offers her a cigarette. Now she don't smoke. And then, ah, uh, forget you. <laughs> okay. Now, so all we have to do now is we've got our, our clone shot is is compensate and do a little bit of, uh, of color matching. There is a color matching tool that you can try to use, but I actually just prefer to use some of the basic tools that are already long-standing tools that are in Vegas already. And I like to adjust the exposure first. And, and one thing you can do is you could actually pull up your scopes and take a look at those. You can see that uh, if we go to the, the waveform monitor, see that's all the bright stuff in the middle. And these are the, these are our actors, uh, our actress or whatever. And she looks about even there actually in terms of, of the lighting right now. And we can play it through, if it'll play. And we can see that's where she's moving on the right. So actually, looking at this as a move, you can see she's maybe a little less exposed. So she's a little underexposed. So what we could do, we can either bring her up or down. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to say to bring her down. So what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do this is what I'd like to do is I'd like to go into the uh, program level effects. So this affects everything that's on the tracks below. If you go into black and white and go add and okay, 
you just you turn the scene black and white and it that way you're not really distracted by the colors and I think you can appreciate the luminance the, uh, components a little bit better in here and we're not way off we're just a little off what I like to do the tool I like to use for adjusting that would be the color curves and I just double click that to bring it in the thing I like about the color curves is that you can set points on it so if you hit here create point See, you can just pull down, like, well, if I set another point, let me add another point here, sorry. Let me set add a point. Then if you add another point, you can just pull down the highlights if the highlights are too high. Or you can uh, affect the whole, the whole curve, you know, if you want. In this case, I'm just going to, there's already handles here. I don't think it needs to come down a much, maybe just a little bit. And it's kind of in the middle, so just... I'm going to say just a hair down like that, not much at all. And that looks pretty good to me. And then the next thing you can do is once we've uh, checked for the exposures, I come into uh, effects. I can actually just click this off the black and white and we're back to color. Now everything, the other thing I like to do, I like to print out a JPEG, I mean, or a PNG file. And if we go save, we're gonna pull up an image and this allows me to really look more closely at the image here. Okay, so this is a good one to look at. So here, she looks definitely warmer to me and she looks like has more reddish or yellow in there and this just seems more white. So we can go down in here to our, our bottom clip and go to effects and we go to our, our color corrector and go okay. And then we get to a point, that point where we were well, I should have marked it, actually, where we were, like right there. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do that right there, put an M. The color correct is a really great tool. So if you look at the, the scene in terms of lows, mids, and highs, this allows you to kind of put a color correction just in a, a range of values versus affecting the whole image. I would say these are more on the toward the mids and the, the lows here. So all you got to do is click this tool right here, and we're going to click on uh, her shoulder. And that samples that color and brings it in here. Now maybe that's a, a little much, but what you can do if just looking at it from here, I can print out another image and we'll take a look at it. The other thing I was going to say, you can actually use this kind of masking effect if you are doing uh, color matching because it allows you to see both images at one time right next to each other. Just looking at this, this looks pretty pretty darn close. The other thing I was going to say is you notice up here you can see where the the camera must have moved and so that's get, we're going to fix that. And there is a color difference here and we can try to fix that too. But just doing that one correction I think did a pretty good job. I just want to show you one thing that you can do as you go to try to fine tune these clips to match each other is if you go into the uh, effects up here is showing the, I'll give you an example here. So if, if I pull up the uh, control alt two, and if we go into the uh, vector scope, you can see that yellow line, that's the angle. So that's saying what it's at 129 is the, the actual hue or the color. And this, so this is the actual angle of the hue on the vector scope. So that's 129. And as you move this up in degrees, you can see it's going more to the, uh, actually as you move it up, you see the degrees are going 124, 123, 121 is moving it more toward red and moving that value up is pushing it more toward yellow. So right now it's at 129. The other number here is the percentage of the effect. So as you go out from the center here, the higher the number your it's the the intensity or the uh, the strength of the that hue or color so this is the strength of the effect and that's the actual degree of the color so what you want to do is like let's say if you're looking at this image and you're feeling like it's too yellow and it, it should be a little maybe a little more red what you do is you just come here and actually just change the number so just change it from you know 129 to 127 and that's going to push a little bit more to a red and let's say you thought the the strength was a little a little much, you could just change these numbers here and make it 0.18, 18%. And you could just keep tweaking these numbers until you felt like you got it just about where you wanted it. Now I'm gonna say right there that's pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna get it much better than that, but just know you can change these numbers and get really fine-tuned color and the intensity of that color correction that you added, that you sampled. 
Now, if I want to correct, this is uh, that redness there. That's really going to be in the shadows. So what I could do is I can go into effects on her side, which is her clip, and go in here and add the color corrector on that side and go OK. And then what I can do is I could just, I could take a little sample of this, actually probably this color, and then it's of course going to pull me to the reds. But I, I don't want to overdo it because it's going gonna, it's gonna to cast a little bit of red onto her. So I'm just going to take this down to let's say 5%, which would be 0 0.05. And just not a lot. And uh, like I said, I could maybe I can go up, maybe I'll go 0 0.9, 0 0.099%, something like that, just to boost the red and the shadows a little tiny bit. And that's it. The only other thing that I can do is to even this up. What I do on there is just go into the mask here. Uh, because we didn't add any feather yet, is uh, make sure I'm on the first position actually. What I can do is change this to both, and I can see the effect of the mask right here. Looking up here, it basically gets rid of it. Now I could also push it down, but I think the mask kind of levels it out, and I don't think anybody's even going to notice that. And that's pretty much it. I, I want to say that probably. 70% of matching shots is getting the exposure right, the luminance right, and maybe 30% is color, and that you should focus on getting the skin tones right first, and then anything else uh, where you can go in maybe to the shadows like we did uh, here. In the shadows you want to pull up the red, let's say, you can do that here. So that's basically all there is to it. I hope you found this helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, please uh, let me know. Well, that's it. Take care. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you later.